Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight we are here for part two of our Blood Bowl series for uh, to discuss the new Amazon team. Um, if you've already watched part one, um, that was the unboxing video for that Amazon team itself. And in that video, I mentioned that at the time of filming, which this is actually about two weeks apart, that at the time of that filming that episode, that my expectation was that this issue of Spike Magazine would be released about the same time as those models. Um, but thankfully those models did come with their individual stats on them without you needing to having to purchase this book. Um, which is, I believe from what I've seen, that is the first team to do that. Unless, of course, I was just blind and missed it previously on the uh, the other models that we've looked at. Um, so definitely worth going back and taking a look at those old assembly guides and uh, seeing if this is just something that was always there that I've always missed or if this is actually something new that they started doing. But back on track, uh, we are now here with the newest issue of Spike magazine. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing that we see right off the bat is some painted examples of the Amazon team. And then we go into uh, kind of the the fluff as, as it were, um, you know, the background on the team itself. And then we go into you know, basic descriptions of the team units themselves. Like we have Eagle Warrior Lion Woman, Python Warrior Throwers, Piranha Warrior Blitzers, and Jaguar Warrior Blockers. And so it actually gives you a breakdown of uh, those different types of characters and a little bit about them, as well as gives you a list of all of their eligible star players. Now, I don't know that I've ever noticed this before, but we have the White Dwarf himself listed on there, and I don't recall ever actually seeing a Blood Bowl White Dwarf model, and now that I know that it's a thing, and I'm sure I've missed it before, because I'm pretty sure that um, if they have him listed, that he's going to be able to be played by any team. So either it's something that's going to be coming out in the future, or um, he's one that uh, has been around for a while and I just never noticed. So definitely some things to double check on to see uh, you know, how oblivious I truly am when it comes to some of these things. But the, the fact that there is a white dwarf Blood Bowl model either soon to be in existence or already in existence makes me really really want one and i mean like pretty much every time that they've released a grabrindle model it's always been fantastic and so i'm definitely l hoping to get started with one finally uh, because i've actually missed out on every single one that they've released and so i'm thinking that this will probably be my first at least my first that I want to go for. Maybe down the road, you know, start find, trying to see if I could find uh, people selling the originals and go from there. But um, I, I definitely think Blood Bowl is a great place to start for sure. So we go into um, the next section. This continues kind of the overall fluff. And so it talks about the famous Amazon teams. Um, as well as team spotlights. So with the different teams, it basically gives you four main teams. So this kind of gives you some predefined teams that you can actually paint your models to look like if you want to go with one of these teams, if you don't want to create your own. Um, uh, specifically the Feathered Jaguars, the Patraxi Pythons, Skywatch Sentinels, and Great River Wardens. And then we go into the team spotlight for a specific team in the Kara Temple Harpies. 
Now, one thing I, I really like is that in this kit, the model kit specifically, I mean, that you know every, every kit comes with multiple footballs to be used in, in, on the models and as well as in the game to kind of fit with that that team's theme and the fact that we have it looks like dark elf skulls as some of the footballs I think is awesome um, I mean it definitely kind of fits in with the overall theme of Blood Bowl um, so here is some of the details about the Kara Temple Harpies and this is where you're going to find you know some of the um, star players already um, so like uh, Estelle Levenu I probably butchered that um, I'm terrible when it comes to pronunciations of uh, names especially when they look kind of French um, so this is her right here she basically has like poison frogs all around her and um, looks a bit crazy uh, goes through her career highlights um, dirt from the dugout glot and glottal stop includes his stats as well and then we go into the Amazonian temple leagues um, so specifically these are leagues that can be run where other teams can come and play um, starting with the the jungle bowl and then we have a couple different tables to roll off of there um, first one is the lustering locals so basically you use it to represent the impact that the local inhabitants will have on the games in this bowl we have the weather, uh, weather table um, and a kickoff table so with the weather table um, you know, it has a lot of the you know typical ones that we normally see you know with rain you know wind affecting things um, you know sun sunshine but we've we've also got tropical storm um, you know, a typhoon has made its way into the air area bending trees and disrupting the match with a powerful gale while this weather condition is in effect Ignore step two of the start start of start of wow I can't read start of drive sequence. It is not possible for a kickoff to be, to be resolved, and a touchback is automatically caused instead. Um, and then also hellish humidity. Um, now from, I don't remember seeing hellish humidity in any other bowls that I've looked at before. Um, specifically, the heat and humidity is really starting to get to some of the players. And they are dropping like halflings after a picnic. At the end of every team turn, roll a d6. On a roll of one, a single randomly selected player on the active team succumbs to the oppressive heat and is placed prone. Which is interesting though, is it doesn't specify how to choose randomly. Um, you know, so I think with most players, you know, maybe the at least the way I would do it is I would essentially assign you know a number one through sixteen for each of my characters, and then you know roll a d twenty, and on that d twenty whatever I land on that's the character that would be taken out, um, and if it's above sixteen you know then re roll it, and so you know definitely an interesting effect. Because um, you, I mean, you could effectively, you know, remove an, an, an opposing team relatively quickly if they're rolling very poorly. Um, like I know me personally, I am terrible when it comes to luck with rolling dice, and so you know, with that in mind, roll, rolling a one, I feel is going to come up quite often for me, and. So, you know, it then becomes a, a game of, you know, fighting to see who's going to last the longest, not just score the points. And so it, it's definitely going to be adding an interesting dynamic there. Um, you 
And then we go into using the Overground Jungle Pitch in your Blood Bowl games. Um, so basically there, there's two different styles. One is the Jungle Floor and then one is, after, is a tor Torrential Downpour. Um, so you basically turn the map uh, board over depending on um, you know which one you're doing. And then we have the Coffin Corner section. Um, specifically, these are players that have di have died um, previously, and so we go through uh, some of those from the lore. Now, I don't remember an Amazon team from the original Blood Bowl, um, but I also only had a couple teams back when that first released, and so it may have been one team that that they came out with that I never saw. I know that um, my lo my hobby shops at the time did not stock Blood Bowl really almost at all. Basically, you know, they'd have the main starter set and could special order you a team if, if you wanted one. Um, but, you know, beyond that, they didn't really stock it. You know, and again, this is back when Blood Bowl was new, like for the first time. Um, but I don't believe that there was an Amazon team. So I suspect that this is more kind of just giving more of a kind of an in-depth history to this type of team. So that way, you know, it kind of feels like it's not just put together, uh, you know. So you have, you know, kind of things more flushed out. You have a history, you know, you might go into a game and, and dedicate that game to one of these people that's passed. Um, you know, like for example, um, Virana Blackfang was a Jaguar warrior. Um, she decided to hunt down a large Jaguar to make a new skull helmet and pelt to replace her uniform. And though her near gear was rather fetching, she hadn't counted on having to travel on foot through the jungle, and she became hunted um, by it looks like some malevolent jaguars that wanted to get revenge for her killing a jaguar and taking its pelt. And you know, so you know, you could have your team dedicate their game to her memory. Um, you know, and so it it, it gives a, a fun dynamic to the game as a whole. Um, <sighs> Excuse me. All right, so so with it here we have chat with the rat. Um, I don't remember this section from previous issues. Um, but I haven't read many issues overall. I mean, this is issue 15, and I think I've only looked at three, including this one. Um, but with Chat with the Rat, this is interviewing um, a member of the Obsidian Ocelots. And then we go into uh, talking about the Amazon balls, so specifically the Crystal Skull Ball, um, which is shaped like a dark elf skull and helmet and then the snake swallowed ball um, which I thought was hilarious as a model um, and and I'm actually glad that I've read this specifically in here because the box for the models doesn't really identify the skull ball as a crystal skull ball it's just one of the balls and so, you know, seeing this and knowing now that it's supposed to be a crystal skull um, as the ball, it's going to be, you know, it, it's definitely going to change the, the paint style that I originally had planned because, you know, I was originally planning on painting it to look like a skull and a, a, an elf skull in a elf hat uh, or helmet. And so now, you know, seeing this, definitely changes exactly how I was going to be doing that. 
All right, and then we go to Secrets of the Amazons. This is actually where we look at their stats, their costs, um, how each unit is meant to be played. <sighs> we have our starting rosters themselves, um, team development, So depending on how you know your team is progressing, you know some changes you can make to uh, improve uh, certain stats. And then we go to the setups. Um, so this is basically how you want to set your your team lineup, depending on if you're an offense or defense. Now, one thing that I like about that is in the, in, in the game and in the video game that's related to it, you know, setting your team for, you know, kickoff and that, those first plays was always one of those things that, like, I never truly understood what I was doing. You know, I, I think that I probably would have had a better understanding had I played, you know, games like Madden um, or studied anything to do with football. Um, but, you know, for me, this is as close to sports as I like. And, you know, so, you know, Blood Bowl's a lot of fun. I love it. Um, you know, I love the mayhem. I, I love the game. It's, but, it, you know, I never bothered to learn you know, American football. And so because of that, it kind of puts me at a little bit of a detriment. Like, I've played it. Um with some of the guys, you know, running some plays with them, but, you know, never really understood the strategies or anything, you know. I was always one of those guys that you know, was bigger than almost everybody else, and so basically they had someone running behind me with the ball, and I was pushing everybody else out of the way. And that's as much as I needed to know. So, you know, for this, to have it actually identified as, you know, this is how where you start your character's definitely is a huge help to somebody like myself and seeing this you know it makes me want to go out and get you know more of these issues to coincide with all of the other teams that I have already um, and then we go into our other star player spotlights um, so this one boa constrictor Basically a snake lady with arms and her career highlights. And then we have, hi Malibu, you are blocking the camera kitten. Back up. So that is my daughter's cat Malibu, um, who is trying to start a fight with one of her other cats. Um, all right, so as I was saying, with the this dungeon bowl update section, um, let's see. So this looks more for oh, because it says dungeon bowl. Um, so dungeon bowl for those that haven't haven't played it or seen um, our our video revolve, involving that game. Um, so Dungeon Bowl, you know, is not traditional teams, you know, it's the same kind of game overall, but you're doing it in dungeons and you're looking for treasure and things like that at the same time and dealing with traps and things like that. And so there's the different colleges of magic are involved and basically, you know, host each team. Um, and so with the Amazons. Uh, they are aligned with the College of Heavens. So it gives their specific stats to to be used for Dungeon Bowl as well. And then we go into a three-page comic centered around the Amazons. And then it ends with the remaining models uh, 
with painted examples, including the uh, the star players. Now, for those that aren't already aware, the the star players themselves, you would have to order them through Forge World if you wanted to use them. Now, me personally um, would love to have the I believe it's a Croxagore if I remember correctly. Um, it's a fantastic model um, of the three. It's definitely my favorite. My second favorite being Bow Constrictor. Uh, the lady with the frogs, she's definitely got personality. But, you know, in a game like Blood Bowl, you know, I, I, I've talked about this before. My, my general play style with almost any tabletop game, really, is, you know, hit them hard, hit them fast. And, you know, she doesn't really have that look about her. And, you know, I want my team to typically be look as menacing as possible. Because, you know, I want my opponent, if they're in, especially if they're not familiar with the rules for the team I'm playing, to kind of give pause and, and see, like, okay, wait, like, these guys look like they're going to be big trouble. And so, you know, like, maybe they're going to be a little bit more on the defensive instead of the offensive and, you know, kind of change up their play style based on those appearances. And for me, um, she just doesn't fit. That, that visual dynamic um, but as far as the Amazons go um, I really like the models they are great um, I, I definitely love that you know they, they kind of fit with a like Central American style uh, you know early inhabitant uh, Iconography, you know, like kind of similar to like Mayan or Aztec, uh, Incan, something like that. Um, I can't remember which one it's closest to. I, if I had to guess, I'd say Mayan. Um, but, you know, with, you know, if the old world map for Warhammer was, was truly, you know, the actual planet that we're on right now, you know, Lustria, the Amazon, that's all in re really where Africa would be. And and keep in mind, I'm going completely from memory on this one because it's been a while since I've looked at the map. But, you know, where North America is, that was pretty much Nagaroth and all the Dark Elves there. And, you know, so the Amazons were coming up from Africa but their overall look is very much like, you know, Central American iconography, like I said. And so either it's meant for over there and my memory's been poor all this time, um, which if you ask my wife, it is. Um, and, you know, if if it's not there, then if it is from Africa, I... I'm, I think that you know, kind of going with this aesthetic. I mean, it, it looks great. It's definitely one of my favorite looking teams for sure. Um, but for their geographic location, where they're coming from, you know, might not be the best in, in those terms. Now, obviously, you know, they're not really going for realism because I mean, they have a giant alligator in in uh, armor on the field playing football um, but you know taking from you know one culture and then kind of attributing to that to another in another area when the map was so similar to our existing worlds um, I kind of feel like it was it might be a mistake there uh, but you know that's just my opinion on that you know i don't think that it's going to affect gameplay whatsoever you know they're fantastic models um the stats look really good um like looking at them right now i don't remember w specifically what i really liked about them um but when i had compared them to some others there was some really cool stuff in there um uh, and definitely looking forward to playing them you know they are from what I've read and gathered, you know, again, because I haven't played them yet and I haven't finished building them all. And so, 
you know, but from what I'm reading, it seems that they are you know, meant to be very fast paced and meant to be pretty deadly on the field. So, you know, definitely looking forward to getting them out there and, you know, getting to playing with them and seeing how they fare. But, uh, you know, for, and for anyone that picks them up, I do definitely recommend picking this up, especially if you're getting the, the actual related themed boards um, for the game. And now, if you're not getting those and you just want the team, now obviously the, the instruction booklet, as we said in the previous video, does include the, um, the stats needed for each of these models, so you're good there. Uh, so if you're going that route, you know this book is not nece necessary, but the size of the font is much bigger in this book versus that assembly guide, and so it'll be much easier to read. Plus the the colors really pop, um, and and really it's a great looking piece. You know, just kind of have out during your games. It's gonna be a lot easier to you know just verify you know real quick. Okay, so this model does this stat. You know, for example. Um, but that's it for tonight on uh, for this issue or for this video. Um, now, if you, if you guys could you know, like and subscribe, I would definitely appreciate it. We are pushing to get ourselves a custom URL set up, um, and we can't do that without your guys' help. And you know, if you guys have any comments, anything that you'd like to see, any thoughts on the uh, the map conundrum. Um, we'll call it, you know, please share your thoughts there and, uh, you know, we'll, we can definitely have a discussion there in the comments, but, you know, thank you guys always for watching. I do really appreciate it and, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Good night.